think that there was anything on the face of God's green earth that would push me to do what I am going to do right now. But J.C. Dykes, you have pushed the mighty hobo as far as you're going to push. Right here is $22. And it goes to any human being that can eliminate J.C. Dykes from wrestling. Discount Store Mafia, you and your whole entourage of people, Cliff Compton, Super Festus, Power Uti, the names, the list, it goes on and on. Anybody that can eliminate J.C. Dykes for me has got $22 cash. Tommy Rich, you were hobo champion. You took the belt from the hobo. You're the man, you can do it. Please, look at it, I'm begging you, it's right here for you. Please, somebody, get the damn money. Folks, I apologize for the speedy introduction, but welcome to Red Card Headbutt Wrestling, and already we are embroiled in a contest of epic proportions. Fresh off of his win against Wildfire, Tommy Rich to reclaim the Hobo Camp Championship title, we have the mighty Hobo going up against J.C. Dykes Jr. This is a non-title double dog collar chain match. Dykes said in a pre-match interview that he has no need for the title since apparently he lives in a domicile with running water and at least one working toilet. It's a massacre on the dance floor, folks, as the mighty hobo grinds the unforgiving steel chain across the forehead of J.C. Dykes. And if they plan the spot correctly, Dykes should be bleeding like a leaky faucet any second now. We are coming to you live once again from the banquet hall of a Red Lobster. And once again, Bill, the programming director, has forced me to travel again to West Virginia. The paid attendance appears to be about 20 or so, with at least half getting in free after purchasing a dessert with their order. In an effort to get more viewers to the program, Channel 72 has gone to the great expense to import the same ring used in the epic Power Udi Super Fastest Match. Some in the crowd were asking before the event stated one of two things. One, who the hell is Power Udi, and why did the mighty hobo try to eat the bottom rope? For those of you that have never seen a chain match before, the rules of the match are quite simple. No countouts, no disqualifications, and the only way the match can be officially stopped is by a pinfall anywhere in the building. Unless, of course, the wedding reception in the next room comes in and asks them to cut this shit out because the best man is beginning to make his speech. Fans in attendance are probably wondering to themselves why the second basket of cheddar biscuits hasn't gotten to them yet. The hobo is choking the life out of Dykes at this moment, and one has to wonder if all the gasping and convulsing really, really do to the fact that the hobo hasn't bathed in weeks. We get a whip out of the corner by the mighty hobo, and if you looked away for a second and I wouldn't have faulted you for that, the ring almost imploded from the impact. Then again, the ring could go at any moment since it seems to be made of cardboard and discarded bindle sticks. Hobo has the chain wrapped around the eyes of J.C. Dykes, which is actually a beneficial position for him because at least he doesn't have to watch this putrid garbage. Look, Frank, if this whole match is just going to be these two jackasses choking each other with a the chain they got from the dollar store, I'm going to just sit here silently until the commercial break. This is the gentleman John Campbell. I'm devilishly handsome, wildly entertaining, and damn it, just good show business. You know what else is just good show business? Red card headbutt. That's what you're watching. We get more choking from the mighty hobo. He might be setting his opponent up for the dreaded bindle blaster. We haven't seen the bindle blaster in a long time from the mighty hobo because most of the time the camera crew just says screw it and leaves before most of his matches are over. We finally get some offense from Dykes as he gives the hobo a shot to the eye. I'm not sur sure which one of his eyes is the glass one, so it's anybody's guess if that really hurt the champion of the hobo people. People in the far corner of the building appear to be busting out a deck of cards and trying to get a game of gin going until these two get this shit over with. 
Dykes choking the Mighty Hobo with the chain. He's getting ready to lay in the boots as the $27 bounty. The Mighty Hobo's manager, Boxcar Frankie, put out to all active professional wrestlers to take Dykes out of action. As of yet, the bounty has not been collected, but maybe those two guys shooting pool in the corner will act on it and get the sock full of ones in assorted change. You can see the anger on Dykes' face. Totally understandable because if somebody called out a hit on me and thought my life was only worth a sock full of change, I'd be damned upset too. Wait, folks, something actually appears to be happening. Dykes has stumbled awkwardly across the ring with his outstretched arm into the mighty Hobo. Say, Frank, did those cheddar biscuits ever get to the table? Folks, the cheap alcohol has taken effect and the mighty Hobo has become drunk with rage as well as cheap alcohol and is peppering Dykes with awkward-looking strikes that mimic the arm motions of a small child playing with a hula hoop. The mighty hobo tosses Dykes into the corner and hits him with his ass. The hobo is mad and the fleas and ticks are sure to be flying in this one now. Both men back out on the floor trying to look for scraps from the wait staff. Dykes rolls out of the ring trying desperately to collect the tips from the tables he is supposed to be waiting and the mighty hobo follows along to get the half-eaten admiral's feast that the couple arguing whether going to a wrestling show on their anniversary was a good idea left behind. Hobo slaps the referee out of the way to inflict more damage, or perhaps it was to see if he had any money in his breast pocket. What, Frank? I really got to do another live read? Oh, hell. You're sure? I really got to do this one? Say, folks, do you need powder blue and sundries and items and assorted things? But, ladies and gentlemen, I am cutting this live commercial short, and the mighty hobo has just hit Dykes with a tent city splash. Nobody has gotten up from that, and neither is J.C. Dykes. The hobo takes off the collar, and the referee raises his arm in victory, much to the chagrin of everyone in attendance with a sense of smell. That's about all the time we have this week for Red Card Headbutt Wrestling. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.